Hey, small groups. On Sunday, we celebrated the first Sunday of Advent. And typically, in traditional churches, you light a candle. But due to risk assessments, we decided instead of lighting a candle, we would light up some fairy lights. Why did we do that? Because Sunday's theme was all about light. I landed the This Means War series and kicked off our Christmas season by looking at a few passages that speak to the reality of the light coming into the world. Isaiah speaks about this and prophesies about this at the end of chapter 8 into the beginning of chapter 9 and speaks about the fact that there's this light dawning, prophesying the reality of Christ's coming. We know that John the Apostle writes in John chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 4, he says about Jesus, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So since the very dawn of time, there has been a battle and a tussle between the dominion of darkness and the kingdom of light. This battle existed even before the Garden of Eden, but was fully manifested in the Garden of Eden as Satan tempted Adam and Eve into sin and ultimately allowed darkness to have the last word in all situations. Now that changed when Jesus came because Jesus was the light coming into the world. And as John says, in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. So we know that when Jesus came in human time, human history, he changed the plight and changed the prospects for humanity. Humanity who previously would be stuck and bowed and captivated in darkness could now be transferred into the kingdom of light. In fact, as Paul says to the church in Colossae, in verse 13, chapter 1, he says, He, speaking of Jesus, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. So we can now allow the light of God to penetrate our hearts. And on Sunday, I looked at three qualities that light has. What does light do? This is both physically speaking and spiritually speaking. Well, we learned that light reveals. Light kind of re reveals what is hidden. Light reveals maybe those sinful attitudes or thought patterns or maybe those unknown dysfunctions that we carry in our personality. When we allow the light of Christ to shine on us, it actually brings a sense of revelation to our life. And with that, it's not condemnation. It's not a reminder of how much we suck. It's an empowerment because we've become aware of how much we need the grace of God and therefore we can repent. Remember a few weeks ago I spoke about the gift of repentance. We can repent, we can come to Jesus and we can change our mindset and change our direction. So light reveals. Light also guides. We know that light, when you go into a dark room, you turn on the lights and it, it kind of guides our path. And in the same way, spiritually, Jesus, the light of the world, guides our path. As we step into the light, there's a sense of vision and clarity that is available in Christ because of his light. And also we learned that light gives life. We know that's true in the natural world, that like, unless you're a mushroom, you don't grow unless there's light in your diet. Light is integral to the formation and cultivation of healthy life. So light reveals, light guides, and light gives life. And so we celebrated this idea that this light of the world, Jesus has come, and Jesus says, I am the light of the world. But then I kind of turned it back on the church towards the end of my message because Jesus says to us in the Gospel of Matthew, he says, you are the light of the world. Speaking of me, speaking of you, speaking of the church. And to that end, the invitation is not now that we just benefit from living in the kingdom of light but actually we become ambassadors for the kingdom of light we become workers for the kingdom of light we become if you like missionaries for the kingdom of light and we want to bring this light into a dark and dying world and so tonight in your small groups I really want you to think about this first of all this idea that light and darkness have had this battle since the beginning second of all that Jesus the light of the world has come and because of that it changes everything for humanity and thirdly, we now have, have a responsibility of the church to not just live in the light, but to actually carry the light into the darkness. So I hope you have a great time tonight. Just a reminder, this Sunday coming, there is no morning service at any campus. Uh, we've just got a carol service at 5 p.m. and it's going to be a brilliant evening at Magna Academy. So get inviting your friends, get your colleagues coming. We're going to sing some carols together, watch something really fun and hopefully something powerful on a screen and then hear a great message from uh, Pastor Adam from Fernand Campus. We're going to have a great time together this weekend. So I can't wait to see you at the carol service at 5 p.m. on Sunday at Magna Academy. Until then, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal.